Yes. Oh my goodness. We're here. We are here. How yeah. are you? Did I do about the technology? Sana in the no, desert. Yeah, we've, we've moved on. We're not focusing on We're not there anymore. Aye, aye, aye. We're not we've, dwelling we've, there. Uh-uh, we're not there. You're looking, you're looking lovely. All made up. So what were you doing in the studio? Were you recording? No, I was actually doing a gig because that's, you can do that now. Um, so there was a, there's a little bit of a, they're doing these gigs at Mall of Africa to commemorate Women's Man. Wow. Okay. So... Yeah, so it was it was part of a series that they've got put on. Was it out in the open in the public at a public place or what was out that? in the open with people? Wow, so how was that? It was, just, it was like I just wanted to hug everyone. I was like, hello. <laughs> question here because i want to make sure i read the questions before they okay they, they, this okay. one is from many succulents hey these names it says question <laughs> <laughs> what or how was your process of creating d103 was the okay. church was the church hymn apo, uh, 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 apostolic uh, uh, mm. apostolic church feel mm. intention inten, inten, intentional oh i yeah, I don't know if you can get it's okay. That. English bundles are not not a yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, someone was trying with, to call me with, with D103. I think, um, I didn't even think about it that much. Like, I mean, I think as a song, it wasn't even a song that I wanted on the album because I didn't have words and people wouldn't really understand it. But it was it it was just the melody that I'd had in my mm. head for a long time, and I went to Tim Gosima Vimbello, who recorded bass on the album, and someone whom I collaborate with quite a bit. And I was like, "Hey man, this yeah. is, there's this vibe in Izwa, you able? Let's just play around with it." So he, uh, we played around with it on bass, and then he brought the chords. And then listening to the song as a whole, people were just like, "Yo, lingo ming is so doing." So I don't think it was intentional from my. You know, I didn't set out to write something like that. Okay, um, okay. But I think when it came together, that's that's sort of the that's came that's what came of it. So yeah, I definitely don't think so it, it was coincidental. That I coincidental. Definitely, and I think also the popularity of the song has been like completely shocking to me because I was just like, I don't know, what like uh, you know, I was a bit it, like, it's, it's it's not one that you really probably. Uh, was your favorite and no, you were so quite wasn't. surprised that it, it became popular it's shocking to me since November. it's like the one song that everybody's like Yo, it, do you want to three? but I'm like guys why <laughs> like and why, and why, that? why that name though D103 so D103 is my grandparents address uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, anyone who knows Durban knows that Umlazi, which is the, the, the township in Durban, or one of the townships in Durban, they divide, when they, they divide the different sections, they, uh, they divided it according to the alphabet. So, Konaga A, Konaga B, Konaga C, Konaga D, Ganjalo, Ganjalo, Ganjalo. So, my grandparents are from the D section. Mm. Hi, baby. Thank you, Titi. Um, it's fr they're from the D section, and the house number is 103. And it was a dedication to my grandfather because close to releasing the album on the day that i released the album actually i was getting ready for his funeral so I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. Story. Yes. yeah. Mm. so there was a yeah there was a lot going on and so uh, at that time I, I you know we knew that he was um he was transcending you know he'd been sick for a while and he was quite old as well so i found out that he had passed on the day we fin finished mixing the album when it was ready to go to mastering and it just felt like it would be it was it would be a great thing to honor him in in that way. So I named it after my grandparents' address. Beautiful, but um, I mean, were you even a family that went to church though? So it might subconsciously very much. You see, so it might subconsciously the church element might have subconsciously been influential in in that. Definitely, definitely. I mean, my grandfather was like a staunch Christian. Um, we used to get embarrassed because he would be like those people who preached in the train. So like, you know, like <laughs> Bible carrying, you know, Jesus loving man of God, um, yeah. who, who raised my mom up in that way. And then, you know, subsequently my mom raised us up in that way as well. So I think fundamentally gospel 
is my first reference of music if i'm honest with myself i think it's the one thing and i think it's 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 synonymous with a lot of south african families because you know there's always like mm. a hymn you know when yes. we get together we we yeah we sing when we you know part ways we sing to say god protects us on the journey when we go to weddings we sing you know so i think subconsciously gospel has always been my first frame of reference in terms of okay. of, of, of music yeah there's a question for you, but maybe here's a Akona Kutu who says, watching you with my colleagues in Abu Dhabi. Yo, we're not, you bring the world to us, Moses. See it? Uh, <sighs> says, we love as you. Long, as soon as... Keep, keep doing your... Uh, keep doing and going, babe. Uh, but, it's, but, but isn't this the fantastic thing, though, about uh, this period that we've mm. all gone online? That means we have now opened the gates to the world for us to see us and we've also opened the gates for us to see what else is going on around the world definitely i mean i think there are de definite advantages to you know the idea of being more in the digital space um it opens up uh you know a lot of a lot it opens you up to the world essentially which is great uh, but I think it's just tricky because we live in a country that is so um, unequal in the sense that some people have access to to these things like data. Yeah. And, and, you know, for some of us, it sounds so silly. Like, why would someone not be able to um, get data? But it's really that it's really that serious in the sense that, you know, there's such a, a big gap between those who have and those who don't have. True. Um, and so you know, we can celebrate that we have access to these things, but some people don't. And I think also, particularly in South Africa, in terms of infrastructure, you know, signal, all those things have yeah. made it tricky. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, one thing that Corona has sort of opened our eyes to um, is, is are those disparities of, you know, of those who have, those who don't those have, who have, how much they don't those. have. Yeah, yeah. So I think and, it's, been, and, it's, been, and, it's been good and bad. And the majority do not have sometimes yeah, we are so cocooned in our little spaces that we find ourselves not being aware how other people are actually living that we yeah. just go from point a to b and are not conscious or even uh, that that's why the you know we 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 need a lot of love and compassion for the others who don't have that mm. that needs the support and assistance and sometimes you you just wonder that especially with those in the powers that be do they see the reality on the ground yeah. that we yeah. might be witnessing or even experiencing because you you might be fine here but you have relatives and friends who are not having the little advantages or little that you you have so that this period is not as you know as heavy uh, on mm. you as it can be for for other people um how have the people around you been or even you in terms of the struggles and the suffering uh that has brought this period on for some people yeah so I think for me, I've been a roller coaster of emotions. I think initially when everything started, it's it was kind of weird. Like, are we in a movie? So there's like a weird, there's there's like a, you know, the, you look at the positive. So you're at home more often. I'm with my child more often. I'm with my husband and it's nice. You're baking. And then mm. like this thing is going on for four or five months and you're just like, hey, okay, manje, since I got because I'm not working, um, mm. how am I going to make ends meet? And people around you are contracting, you know, COVID-19. Some are passing away. Uh, how close is this, you know, is this virus to me? You know, now mm. you're starting to get a bit anxious. And I think I've been anxious for the past maybe three months um, because there were two gentlemen who are in the industry. I mean, one of which I worked, worked with once on occasion. Uh, he worked at Universal. And uh, another gentleman by the name of Shoni Sani who passed away. Mm. And then it starts to feel like, okay, I could be next. You know, how do I know? Um, luckily, neither myself or my husband's relatives have contracted uh, COVID-19. And I think that's also a big fear because they're, they're elderly. So they are high risk. Mm. Um, so it's been a whirlwind of emotions. I mean, I think 
I'm generally quite measured. It takes a lot to get me frazzled, but I think the last couple of months have been uh, quite tricky. I'm even engaging on social media. You, you on Twitter, you just see RIP, 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 Yo. RIP. So scary. And it's like, hey man, yeah, it's, it starts to get a bit scary. So I think I remember the one day it had crept into my subconscious that to the point where I wasn't sleeping, but I didn't realize what's why Why am I so on edge? Mm. Um, and and I just started to reflect and started to think, okay, this is probably you know affecting me, but I don't I don't realize it. So I took a while took a uh, took a break from social media, okay. um, and then I and then I just decided to take two days off, mm. where I could just sort of meditate, pray, and really just you know get away from that place of feeling anxious and 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 scared of what could be next. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's been up and down. Okay, I'm 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 trying to get to the comments here, and then this thing is is it's okay. changing my, in my camera, but it doesn't matter. Some some, <laughs> some, <laughs> someone was asking about the album. In fact, that's where I was trying to get uh, to about how did you anticipate? This is from Mo Seshibe who says, "Did you anticipate that Injela uh, Ekai uh, album would become so major?" I mean, it's got. Nominations from all the awards <laughs> that are possible. <laughs> Guys, I didn't anticipate anything. I think for me it was just like, okay, I've got this music. Let me put on this, put it, put an album together and just release mm. it. And I think anyone who's a creative knows that, you know, the journey of putting something together is long and tiresome. And by the time you put it out, you're so done with it. You're just like, as a team, I'm done. You know, especially if you're an independent artist like myself who is mm. self-financing, you know, luckily I had um, a team doing the PR, but a lot of the stuff you're doing yourself. So it's, it's draining, you know, it's, it's quite a journey. And by the time it comes out, you're just like, I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. So I definitely did not have anticipate anything. I mean, the nominations were such a shock, like, you know, I was laughing because even the way I posted on, on social media was so haphazard. So the, the if you know, for just some context for those who don't know how um, these things happen, you, apl- you, you apply for the category in which you think you fit. So I applied mm. for the one category, which was for best jazz. So that was, if I was expecting a nomination, it would have only come from that, you know? Okay. And even to get a nomination, I was like, oh, I would have been so, I was... I was I was excited because there were so many incredible albums that were released around the time that Unlele was mm-hmm. released. Mm-hmm. So they announced the nominations. There I am. Oh my gosh! You know, oh my gosh! I'm a rose amongst the thorns. Oh wow! I'm so chavlile. I'm so chavlile. Ki happy, ki happy. Next thing, I see someone post for the one of the other categories. I think it was best newcomer. Best, best female like, and best newcomer, something like that. I'm like, mm. guys, that's my face. Like, <laughs> like, what is my face doing? Doing that? What is <laughs> happening? So I'm like, okay. Then I post, oh my gosh, guys, I can't believe it. I've got another nomination for best newcomer. The next day, it's just November. I kid you not. I'm looking, I'm going, I'm on my phone. I'm scrolling through Twitter. Yeah. I'm at, uh, Ami Faku puts up um, the, that she's nominated for best female artist for female artist of the year. She's like, oh guys, I'm also nominated for female artist of mm. the year. I'm logging. I'm literally going to congratulate her. Me, it's a That's my face. Like, <laughs> what is what is happening? Mm. I literally uh, I DM her and I'm like, babe, is this for real? Like, is this a real thing? So, <laughs> you know, I didn't expect any of it. I didn't expect any of it, mm. but with that said, it's incredibly welcome, and I'm I'm really really appreciative. Congratulations for that! Absolutely, Thank you. congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I know that by the time these like awards thing and nominations come, it's long after the album was released, kind of thing, mm. and it 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 just keeps you taking back to even just the conversations we're having now, now you have to be talking again about how the music was made and where the intentions and dee bidi papa dee pepe dee pepe. Yeah, yeah. What are you <laughs> feeling? What are you feeling? What are you inspiration? Yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. So the awards are next week, so all, all the best for that uh, Thank next you. weekend. All the best for that. Okay. So we, I was talking to not just Gloria, all the other ladies that are uh, these awesome guests on this uh, Standard Bank Joy of Jazz Woman Heart Insta Live takeover about <laughs> just women who inspire you, who have inspired you, that you look up to, because we're celebrating women. 
and uh, we do give each other a lot of support more than people believe you know mm. Uh, mm. so who who have been your person or persons my or people who, who, your your people you know goodness i think i'm 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 very blessed um to be making it, it music at a time such as this because i do really think there's a camaraderie among the women that i work with in the industry you know i have a long-standing relationship and friendship with tanya Dooley, um and she's definitely someone who um both inspires me but also i think sort of pushes me um to be the best ver the best version of myself the best version oh, of yeah. myself yeah. musically <laughs> um, and i think also what is really inspiring about being a female musician now is that the standard is so high that like you are constantly sort of sharpening your craft and sharpening your skill um so women that come to mind definitely zoe mudiha um and i'm naming you know people that i'm friends with that i that are my colleagues um titi luzipo um oh, goodness um, Gabby Mutuba, who's doing something so incredible. And I think also, you know, I think of women who who have sort of challenged the idea of genre. So Gabby comes to mind when I think about someone who's challenged the idea of like jazz yes. and what it is. Um, and that's exciting. It's incredibly inspiring. Um, there is a female saxophonist by the name of uh, Linda Shabalala, who's going to release her, her album soon. Um, so please look out for her. But like, very quiet in her demeanor but man when she mm. plays the horn mm. incredible um so you know those are the women that i think of when i think of people who are inspiring me in the now uh but do you, do you, do you, like do you think though with with the the women around you and with what women are doing you mm. find yourself under pressure to find something unique about you that makes it different from the next person who's doing a similar thing do you not even i think okay. i think and i'll tell you why i think i'm inspired in the sense that i want to be the the truest version of me so I, okay. it, it's, it's more about what do i bring because you know i'm i'm unique i'm my own is, is yes. enough <laughs> I'm a unsecret weapon, Mina, because yeah. there's no one else who's like me. No one yeah. can do what I do. Mm. So I, I, and and that's why I say it's inspiring to be making music now. Everybody sounds like themselves. There's mm. nobody who's trying to. Everyone is in their lane, trying to be the best version of themselves and bring their truth to whatever it is that they're creating. Mm. And that is incredibly inspiring to watch someone on stage who's so has a firm sense of self, like nothing can shake them. Yeah. And it translates in the way they communicate, in the way that they write, in their message, you mm. know, everything about them is so authentic. And, so it's and, always about am I being as authentic as I should be, you know? And Gloria and I were talking about, she in particular was, was talking about how everybody has uh, so, uh, so many stories to tell. Mm. So that, I guess that's what also makes everyone unique and, and different is that your story is not necessarily my story kind of mm. thing that that mm. you could. and we, we we're also talking about how you know as women we like to pamper ourselves and make ourselves whatever and i was talking about how excited i was for this insta live thing because i get to put on lipstick that i haven't been able to put on. <laughs> listen i was the whole house all the time mean <laughs> You know, and I'm thinking you were out performing and you're looking so gorgeous with the makeup. Was was that an exciting process that oh, I am now going to get out of uh, tracksuit pants and gowns and slippers and I am going to look my gorgeous self? <laughs> no, I, I, I think I need to take classes in walking in heels because I was like a, a brand new deer <laughs> like that has just come out of the mommy's womb in the high heels just because... You haven't worn these things in six months. Half so a year. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. I haven't worn heels in six months. I was like, why? And you stable. So <laughs> it, it, is, it is exciting. It is exciting because I also feel like psychologically it calms you down because it feels like, okay, we're going back to mm. normal routine life. You know, whatever. I mean, people keep saying this phrase of new normal. And even that gives me a little bit of anxiety because no one quite knows what it is oh, yeah yeah 
but the fact that I can go to work, you know, I can put makeup on, I can put on a cute dress or put on a cute mm. coat, wear high heels. It makes me feel like, yes, we've seen everything is going to be okay, you know? It's going to be fine. So how, 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 um, what's the word? Uh, now I'm, uh, I'm accused sometimes of being too uh, paranoid, so to speak. Mm-hmm. About yeah. this whole social distancing, wearing masks, sanitize and don't do and making sure that uh, you know getting into contact with people it's you you like eh, eh, eh. Uh, even though you your initial instinct is to go hug them and you know because yes. these are people you know so how 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 um have you am, been am I, am I being have, strict? have you have you been uh, accused of being totally crazy or too relaxed about it I'm definitely on the too relaxed spectrum of things. I think it's just my general disposition about everything. I'm very relaxed, very chilled. Mm. Um, so I'm not like, I mean, I'm definitely following protocols. So I definitely do wear a mask. I do keep the distance, but a funny story yesterday, I was at Krista Mall and through her mask, I saw Zasha Zakis. Did I not <laughs> jump on the poor girl? I was like, <laughs> how are you and you know before she so goes and, just the thing threw up, went, went out the window Ay, la, la, la. Yeah, <laughs> and wow. i just hugged her even when she was leaving after the conversation i was like please can i hug you i just want to say bye you know and you realize how much you miss that you miss like just being able to like touch someone you know someone that you know show affection in that kind of way because this is not a normal way of living, you know, it's completely yeah, no. abnormal. Mm. Um, but we have to do it because obviously we're not trying to get sick. But yesterday was just, it was funny. I got in the car and I was like, I'm sure Zosha thinks you're nuts. But it was just <laughs> nice to see someone <laughs> and embrace them, you know. And embrace um, so them. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely on the relaxed, relaxed side of life. So when, 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 I don't know when it will be, but when it happens, uh, when you know, the uh, lockdown is over and uh, social distancing and we can now do things we couldn't do before. Mm. What's the thing you're looking forward to the most? Going to see live performances. Okay. Um, because as a maker of the music, you don't realize how much you miss being in the audience and like what that does for your soul and what that just does mm-hmm. for your spirit you know mm-hmm. it's one thing to like well be able to do the gigs and stuff and that's also something i also i mean just to gig you know is something i'm really looking forward to but just going to see a gig guys just going to a sound check someone's sound check and just sitting there having a drink <laughs> you know going to untitled or going somewhere watching inspiring yeah. music, people expressing themselves. I really miss that. I really, really, really miss that. Wow. That's, that's yeah. incredible because look now how much we now realize mm. that some of these things that we have been taking for granted as they'll always be there, when they are, when they are removed, we are like, oh my God, can't you, this was actually so important to me that I even more realized that yeah, it, affect, it affects my mood it affects how i feel because of just this one thing you know everything and i think mm. also you know it goes back to the the whole idea of like dig, like going digital virtual and stuff you also realize because obviously a lot of the, you, what people have been doing is putting things online you know creating online platforms for mm. for music and stuff i know that thing that that you know, thing. I know. Shota, <laughs> the thing. <laughs> who, who have you been listening to besides yourself musically uh, during this time? Have you discovered uh, some new people? I've literally, if I'm honest with you, have been listening to a lot of gospel. I think just to calm my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was about to say, oh, are we seeing a gospel album next or something? Okay. Uh. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think the album, this album is still new. And I, so I haven't really even started thinking about a second offering just because, you know, and someone inboxed me and I was like, how, oh, if you put in any album, this one is only a year old. 
ka umamelele yeah wow. <laughs> like you know mm. um but listening to a lot of gospel I was listening to some zimngwana the other day my taste have just like been everywhere and i think place. yeah i think it's also been inspired by my mood um you know i wake up and i'm like what do i feel like listening to a lot of the time it's actually been a, a lot of silence um just so i can mm. gather my my yeah i've been walking um and when i walk don't listen to anything you know really just trying to stay in touch with where i'm at where mentally at. and emotionally yeah so have you have you been boring have you been de- 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 developed yes any new interests or have you found yourself uh, maybe doing something that you've always put off doing that you never got to do because life was just very uh, ahead of well, you interestingly enough i'm actually studying i'm back at school um yeah yeah so i'm back at school keeping quite mum about it because i'm i'm i just want to pass my first assignment i won't i won't tell anyone (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm studying a a thing it's not a music thing um Mm. but it's it's something that i think will really um sort of cut, catapult my career um, and give me options to do other things. So let's, yeah, those are the, yeah. Are so I'm studying. And that has been um, different, uh, very scary because completely out of my comfort zone uh, in what? terms of what it is that I'm studying, but also mm-hmm. just like I haven't studied in a while. So I'd, it's been it's been hard to get the discipline of it back. Yes. You know, I definitely, yes. I can imagine. Like, I can yeah. Imagine. And because and, and, and also uh, so much has changed in your life. You got husband, child, don don don. Oh, by the way, you were at your sister's wedding. Oh, you were not even there. No, I wasn't. Wedding. It was a Zoom wedding. It was a Zoom wedding. That actually happened. A Zoom wedding. So you are all watching this thing going on. We screen. We We screen. Yeah, guys, it's been this has been a weird time. So yeah, she got married, mm-hmm. and she got married to Lumanyano, who's actually a musician. Lol, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> a brother in jazz. Um, okay. And yeah, e- even that experience was a bit like strange, you know, um, mm-hmm. because you can't be there. She's, you know, she's my younger sister. So it would have been lovely. It would have been great to be there. But I also think, you know. They had been wanting to get married for a long time. It would have been unfair for us to say, wait until there's a vaccine so until that we can we're... all get together. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think it also allows for couples to to cut costs, to be honest, you know, which is important if you're going to start a marriage journey um, because a lot of the money is spent on the wedding. And then, you know, now you need to live together. You need to put money together and then there's no money, you know. So I think it it was a blessing in disguise in that sense that now they at least have something in the kitty so they are able to um, start, start their lives together. Start their lives together, which is uh, yeah. fantastic. Okay. Someone is saying, yes, they would like an, a gospel album from you. Uh, <laughs> but listen, uh, as we wrap up, you know, yeah. there are um, a lot of young people who, who love the lives that you guys live, look up to it and aspire to be it. Any advice for them? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, should I be honest no. or should I not? Should I not be honest? honest oh, goodness. Honesty is... Honesty key. always. Mm. I... Look, I think for me, being able to do what I do and, and do it in this way is a dream come true. Um, I didn't... I don't have the fortune of being someone who started you know playing piano or started music lessons at the age of four you know my life my life didn't happen that way and Mm -hmm. so the journey although it has been haphazard um has been amazing nonetheless and so because of the fact that i get to live this life i would encourage everybody to follow their dream and follow their purpose whatever they think that it is um but with a big big but it is hard um and it takes a lot out of you but you really need to persevere and have a clear mind of of one who you are but the the kind of um and i don't want to get all like 
the difference you want to make in the world. But I do really do think that we are put on this earth for a purpose. Um, and, and so, yeah, just follow your purpose, follow your purpose. Mm. And, and, and yeah, that's it. I would say, I would say follow your purpose. So find whatever it is that, you know, that makes you excited, gives you life that, that inspires Mm. you and follow that. And my last question is yes, uh, your ma'am. thoughts your thoughts on the this opportunity that Standard Bank Joy of Jazz has given us on the Insta Live, you know, celebrating, you know, mm. women and in the arts with the heart. Um, how what are your thoughts on being able to have these conversations on a platform like this? I think it's incredibly um important. And I have to say this, um, I, I I really appreciate you, Sis Notamba, because there are a lot Thank of you. gatekeepers. Uh, you know, there are a lot of gatekeepers in this industry. There's just a lot of there are a lot of barriers. But I think you've been someone who's always been generous in spirit, um, also incredibly sincere, and have always always used your platform to you know give us a space as the young as the younger you know, um, musicians to really express ourselves and playing our music. So I really just want to say thank you to you specifically. Oh, thank you. Um, but, but a big shout out to the Joy of Jazz uh, for having the foresight. I know in this time they would have been having the Gileza Clever initiative that I was Yay. fortunate to speak at. Mm-hmm. And so I do think that as a festival, this has also, you know, um, you know, Corona has, I guess it's kind of messed up their plan for the year. But a big shout out to the team for being able to say, okay, what can we do? What, what are the platforms that are available that we can use to be able to have these conversations? Because I really, really, really love intergenerational conversations. I really love that, you know, I can pick up the phone and call this Gloria Bosman and, you know, I can do all of those things. And I think we learn from you, we learn from them, we learn from all the women who came before us who actually opened the doors for us um, so that we can do the same for the next generation. So love Mantua, Sis Mantua and the team um, and big love uh, to everybody who put this initiative together. Love Judith. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really grateful for this, for this platform. And a bit... And a big, 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 big love, 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 and one, 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 one to you <laughs> as well for 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 taking the time uh, to chat to us and share yourself with uh, our audience here on Insta Live, who are just loving you. You should see, you should read the messages after. Hi guys. There's, there's just lots of hearts and hearts and. There's hearts. just hearts everywhere. Hearts everywhere. Everywhere. Spa, thank you so much. As usual, I just enjoy my chats with you. And also Thank the you support so you, you also give me and, you know, and the content you give us to share with the rest of the world. Thank you so much, Asantama. Thank you. Lots of love to you. And thank you to wow. everybody who was logged on today. Please join us again next week, Saturday at three o'clock in the afternoon. Some more gorgeous, awesome, brilliant, talented women that we're celebrating right here on the, the Standard Bank Joy of Jazz Instagram page. Three o'clock on time. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the comments. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And tune in to the forever, uh, the, 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 what do you call it now? Metro FM, the Urban Jazz Experience, 9 p.m. Yes, tomorrow night. Ta-ta. <laughs>